Hi, I'm Alia Parks. I'm a singer-songwriter and a commercial model and a host. I have been singing in the shower ever since I was a baby. Um, singing in the back of the car when we're stuck in traffic. Um, music has been my first love, lover, friend, best friend, and heartbreak all at the same time. It's always been the one constant in my life. But I didn't start doing it professionally till I was about 20 years old already. Where I'm from, I'm from the Netherlands, I grew up there. Music is a hobby, it's not a profession. Uh, at least not in the minds of a school child, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, so it wasn't until we moved to the Philippines and my mom's encouragement, that who, she was the one really who pushed and said, this is what you're meant to do, so why don't you try it? And I, I moved to Manila in 2000 and um, kind of picked it up from there, loved it. It's sort of unique, uh, like listening to your story that your mom pushed it. I mean, not a lot of parents, I mean, most parents would prefer their kid to be a doctor. Right. Or like well, my mom probably knew that was never going to happen. <laughs> um, I wasn't the ideal student, to say the least. Uh, maybe in elementary, but as soon as I hit high school and college, I was quite the rebel child. Uh, and it really went from day to night. Um, and so I went from like a straight A student who could memorize everything to just not paying attention to anything and not even my teachers. And um, I guess my mom just had this thing like, you know, music. And I guess because she was, she's the Filipino uh, parent. And I guess for her, having showbiz as a career wasn't so foreign. It wasn't so unusual. And, and knowing how I'm, I am an Aries, I'm easily bored. I get really excited about something and then I kind of just get bored, except when it comes to music. I would say um, Natalie Cole, Karen Carpenter, Michael Jackson. And then after that, I really got into the 90s R&B, old school singing, like um, Boyz II Men, um, Brandy, Monica, that sort of thing. And um, I still had this love for jazz, so I did some gigs in hotel lounges where I loved doing Natalie Cole, um, unforgettable album songs. And, um, well, I don't have the huskiest voice, so it took a long time for me to build confidence doing jazz because, you know, there's this stereotype voice that you expect, like a very low, husky, warm, dusky voice, but that's not me. Um, so it, it took a while for me to really kind of own it and say, you know, uh, it, it, you don't need to sound like this. To, it, it, it's, it's really more on the delivery, the feel, the lifestyle. And it, it takes a while for somebody who grew up in an environment where it's really more business-minded to kind of understand the feeling, the delivery of such emotions, regardless of the timbre of your voice. When I first started, um, indeed, my, 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 my appearance um, was a big pro and a big con, in a sense, because um, I sang before I started modeling. I was actually discovered during a gig. And, um, well, even looks-wise, uh, my confidence level wasn't very balanced, I'd say. Um, when I grew up, I, I was the only Filipino kid in the city um, of people where there are a couple of Chinese and a couple of Indonesians, so they would just call me Ching Chong. I had these little pink round glasses. I don't know what my mom was thinking. And then obviously I have very big teeth and my, I had too many teeth, so they were all sticking out and they would call me Bugs Bunny and I was really teased in school a lot. I was, I was bullied. So when I got here and I had braces on and I had my contacts in and you know what I mean? All of a sudden they're asking me to do commercials and I'm like, are you guys pulling my leg? Like, are you kidding me right now? Like, what, are you on drugs? <laughs> like, what's wrong with you? And I, and I had gone to VTRs for like two, three months, not even one call back. And then one day I got a call back and it just went on and on from there. And then it started to outshine my singing career. And yes, I was not born with a golden voice. Um, I really, really had to practice hard to get to where I am vocally, musically, um, because it was really all just driven by passion.
Um, I couldn't sing more than two songs in a night because the stamina wasn't there, the strength wasn't there, the placement was wrong in all, in all places. I um, was with live bands for three years before I started kind of developing like by listening, by researching, by practicing. Um, and it, it, it's, I would say, the majority of my improvements have been self-study. But I would, you know, now with the help of YouTube, you, you get a lot of um, information. I did a, a one month singing, uh, like a vocal technique training session, and that helped me immensely. Um, but it did indeed, the, the modeling started to outshine my progress as a, as a musician. And it was great in the sense that I was making good money, but it, it didn't feel good to know that now I'm getting hired because I'm the girl from the commercial who can sing, who, oh, kaya naman pala. Um, and that's really more of a, a personal thing, um, which I, I, I was still able to utilize it marketing-wise and maybe business-wise. I try to kind of milk the best out of it, <laughs> you know what I mean? And just put that money into my savings and, and just continue doing what I'm doing. and. Um, Yes, um, to get back to your question, um, there were a lot of times where people would really come up to me and say, oh, I thought you're just this pretty girl who can just sing so, so long or can just barely carry a tune. I didn't know you were really serious about music. And that to me was very valuable, especially over the years, um, growing as an artist, getting not just compliments, because compliments are just words, but having people of a certain caliber wanting to work with you, that to me, and these are not necessarily people that you see on television that you know by name. These are the people, these are musicians that are in the back making other people shine, but you'll never know who they are. You don't know their names, but they're the geniuses. They're the ones who create the magic for the pretty faces in front, even those who cannot carry a tune at all. And uh, to get offers to work with people like that, I think that was for me the biggest validation in terms of my musical abilities and my musical growth. Hey, I'm Aliyah Parks and you're watching www.pinoytuner.com. And we're coming at you live from the man cave. This is a, an original composition that I wrote a few years ago for Beautiful Days, an album by Kyla, our very own R&B princess. This song is called The Hurt I'd Go Through, and this was my piece at the World Championships of Performing Arts in Long Beach, California, this 2015. And I won gold for this song, and so I'd like to share this one with you. Here it goes, the uh, man cave rendition. <laughs>